Greetings everyone. This video presents some important post-analysis checks and e-tabs that should be conducted before moving to design phase of structure. First we will check the model stability and analysis results. Then, we will do building drift and torsional irregularity checks under seismic loading in Zone 3 under UBC 1997 code. The purpose of these checks is to see if the non-structural components will maintain serviceability under or after earthquakes. Proceeding to design phase without these checks will be redundant, as we have to comply with these checks even after design of structural elements. I have already developed the 3D model of the building. The model has four levels, one without slab at ground and three levels with slabs. Now, click on Display Options button in the toolbar and go to Object Assignment tab and check Sections option. Click OK. Now you can see the dimensions of columns and beams. The slabs are 6 inches thick with openings as shown. Hide the section labels using Display Options. Let's have a look at the shell loads. Right-click on the slab and go to Loads. The wall loads are already defined in the load pattern and imposed on the beams. Four expressions are used for seismic load patterns collectively in X and Y direction as shown here. Strength and importance factors as inputs as per UBC 97 can also be seen. Now let's run the analysis using the button shown in toolbar or F5 on keyboard. Our analysis run is complete. Let's first check the stability of our model. It can be checked by looking at the negative eigenvalue, which should be zero for a stable run. Click on Analyze in Menu, and go to Last Analysis Run Log. Scroll and look for eigenvalue. Our eigenvalue is zero which means the model run was stable. If the eigenvalue is negative, it indicates that the structure model is ill-formed, unstable or ill-conditioned. The dominant reason for negative eigenvalue is improper joint connectivity. To check the building drift and torsional irregularity under seismic loading, we will have to develop an Excel calculation sheet. Let's log the data required for check calculations. We will need over strength factor, R, the fundamental time period of building, T, and limiting constant dependent on time period as mentioned in section 1630.10.2. Our value for over strength factor equals 5.5. Follow the video to format your calculation sheet. To import the story data, go to Tables tab in Model Explorer and eTabs, then Model Definition, then Story and Grid Data. Right-click and Show Table. Then select the stories and copy-paste in Excel.
To find the time period of building, go to Deform Shapes in Toolbar, click on Mode option and apply. You will see the T value in right window. To check the analysis against drift ratio, let's have a look at the relevant section of the UBC code. Our reference equation will be maximum inelastic response displacement or delta M, as shown here. There are two underlying conditions with limiting constant of 0.02 or 0.025, which dependent on the time period of building. In our case, T is greater than 0.7, therefore limiting constant of 0.02 will be used. As story drift ratio is story displacement divided by story height, we can rearrange the equation in terms of drift ratio as shown here. Now, go to Analysis Results in Model Explorer, then Join Outputs, and Story Drifts. Right-click on Output Case, and select X Positive, and select the values under Drift column. Copy and paste in Excel sheet as shown. Using the previously rearranged equation, our allowable standard drift ratio is determined using this formula. The SDR should be less than allowable limit, for the structure to be safe and serviceable. Use the IF condition in Excel, to declare safe if SDR is less than allowable, and otherwise for false statement of the IF formula. Now, let's see if story drifts are within permissible limits on each floor. Story drift is the relative displacement between two floors. We will determine the story drift using this equation, and rearranging it as a function of story drift ratio and story height. Now let's find out the calculated inelastic story drift to compare it to allowable limits.
Delta M should be less than Delta A, for the building to be safe and serviceable. Story displacement is taken with respect to the base. It will be the cumulative sum of story drifts that were just calculated. Format the table as shown in the video. Story displacement is taken with respect to the base. It will be the cumulative sum of story drifts that were just calculated. Now, finding allowed displacement on relative stories by rearranging the delta m equation, we will get the following expression. Now sum up the story displacements to total structure displacement. The calculated cumulative displacement should be less than maximum allowable. Copy and paste the table, and repeat the calculations for X negative and other two seismic load patterns in Y direction. You will, now, only need to copy and paste the story drift ratio values for relevant seismic load pattern. When a building is acted upon by lateral loads, which is earthquake load in our case, can induce torsional moments or a twisting effect in building. It is important for a building to be stable that relevant irregularity checks be made. 
On the right side of the screen, you can see the horizontal torsional moment due to lateral earthquake load, twisting the building. The response is also dependent on the geometry of building and location of opening and other structural elements. If column and shear wall sizes are already adequate, the irregularity can be lowered by increasing lateral stiffness of structure by increasing the width of beams or changing the orientation of columns. However, if the columns and shear walls are not stiff enough, as already seen in our prior checks, the geometric sizes of the columns may be increasing to reduce torsional irregularity. Format your sheet to this tabular arrangement. Now, go to the Model Explorer in eTabs. Then in Analysis Results, go to Story Max over Average Drifts. Right click and choose Show Table. In the Output case, right click and choose X Positive Earthquake Load Pattern. When the ratio of max to average drift is less than 1.2, then no irregularity exists. When it's between 1.2 to 1.4, moderate irregularity exists. And when it's greater than 1.4, extreme irregularity exists. Now, calculate irregularity in the same way as shown for rest of the earthquake load patterns, and see what sort of irregularities exists if any. In the end, we saw that our structure has torsion irregularities in one of the seismic load pattern. Additionally, we also saw that our structure did not pass in many of the story drift and displacement related tests. So, it is better to revise the sizes of columns and beams. Followed by these checks again and then, proceed to the design phase. Thank you for watching the video. Please like the video and subscribe to my channel.